Okay, so the first step of our uh, task, task two in week seven, is to install the SuperPen plugin. Now we could actually, you know, have created this from scratch. We could have used a template, but there's uh, there's some complexities with doing that, and I felt that it's probably best just to play with an existing Atto plugin first uh, and test what you can do and get used to the development environment before you attempt to create one from scratch. However, with our block, we used an existing template to create that. And there were some issues because uh, it wasn't designed for the purpose that we were using it. So this Atto Super Pen plugin is one that I have written specifically for using uh, in the Moodle Bytes Introduction to Development course. So the easiest way to install this is to go to GitHub and either download the zip from the uh, from this location here or um, I use uh, git clone from the command line to install the Atto SuperPen plugin. You know, obviously we have covered git in an earlier module in this course so git would be a good choice. One thing to be aware of is that I've tried to keep the uh, the uh, the github repository in stages and each branch represents a stage. So we have the start of week seven, and here we have start, start task two of week seven. That's actually end, I will be changing that. So you should, if you choose to download it, you should download the start of week seven branch, uh, and that will give you a good base to, uh, to begin. But uh, I'm going to go now and install it from the command line. So here we are with our text, uh, our terminal, and uh, you, will navigate to the uh, the plugins directory for Atto, which will be something like this, cd var www moodle lib editor Atto plugins, something like that. And then you will, uh, from there, clone the Atto SuperPen repository and work with that. In my case, I've actually ins already installed Atto SuperPen because I'm using it on my uh, development site. So I'm not going to do that, but that's a step you should first do, go to the correct directory. Then uh, you want to do the git clone. Now the easiest way to do this is just to copy and paste the, uh, the command from from the, t from the task explanation. Git clone. Oh, that's already it's gone through. I hadn't done it. Okay, so if we it's actually I actually copied more than one line. That's why I apologise for that. Uh, if we look now, we actually do have our CD. We do have our SuperPen plugin, and the next step uh, here is going to be to enter the SuperPen plugin directory, and as I illustrated before as I showed before we actually have several branches and right now we'll be on the main branch which is master let's have a look and you can see that go in the master branch you should be able to go git checkout start of week seven and you will switch over to the start of week seven branch which is where you want to be all right so in step two of our task we are going to go through and ask Moodle to uh, update the settings and install our plugin from the Moodle interface so we go to our site administration and we choose uh, notifications. Uh, and amongst all the rubbish on my junk uh, development site, I do have the super pen plugin, which is to be installed. So let us do that. that's been installed successfully and now we're going to look at our settings page so by default our super pen plugin has three settings 
red pen visible, green pen visible, and blue pen visible. And these are uh, related to the capabilities that we're going to add shortly. Okay, so our plugin has installed, and you might think that we are finished, but in the case of an Atto plugin, we are in fact not finished. We now have to go to the, uh, the settings for Atto, the Atto toolbar, here under Plugins, Text Editors, Atto HTML Editor, and Atto toolbar settings. And we need to make sure that SuperPen is listed uh, amongst the plugins that are to be displayed. So if we scroll down the list of plugins, we have a fair number of them. We'll see here we have Super Pen. But if we look here on the toolbar config, we will see that we have a list of plugins uh, and categories, but Super Pen is not among them. So if we display the Atto HTML editor now, we won't see Super Pen. So let's fix that by adding Super Pen here just after Italic. So style one now equals title bold italic and super pen. Now when we go to see uh, an HTML editor somewhere in our course, we should see the super pen icons. Let's do that now. And we've just jumped a little to uh, speed things up to a news forum in one of the courses here on my development site. And the HTML editor will load, albeit a bit slowly. And there you can see that our super pen icons are displaying on the Atto HTML editor. Right, so we have installed the plugin and we can see that it is displaying there on the Atto HTML editor. But we, we should really check it's actually working before we do anything, because if it's not working, uh, then we have an issue that we may mistakenly believe is ours, when in fact it's mine. So let's type something in the text area, the quick brown Foxes jumped over the blue dogs. And let's select an area of text. Let's take, just take the word blue for now. Click on the blue icon. And our uh, text has in fact turned blue. That's good. Let's choose a larger area. And let's turn this green. Okay, and that seems to have happened. And let us remove one of the colors from here. So let's remove the pen from the blue location. Okay, and that has been removed. All right, so our plugin is working. Well, we think so, but we should also check the, uh, the settings for our plugin. So let's do that now quickly. Let's go to Site Administration. Plugins, uh, we're looking for text editors, Atto HTML editor, Super Pen. Let's open this in a new tab just to speed things up a little bit. And let us remove the uh, green pen. Okay, and let's just see if this has the desired effect of removing the green pen from our HTML editor toolbar. So while we save our post, save our post and we'll come back and edit it in a moment. So the desired behavior should be that our green pen is not 
displayed on the HTML editor toolbar because we've turned it off in the settings. If we peek at the uh, the HTML there before uh, the HTML editor displays, that's quite interesting too. We can see uh, perhaps not everything's quite as it should be there. But the desired effect has uh, occurred. We'd have uh, we have in fact been able to hide the green pen. All right, so everything seems pretty good with our Super Pen plugin. Now in steps four, five, and six, we're actually going to add the capabilities to our plugin. And I've, I've provided the code for you uh, in the task uh, because I, it, perhaps I think it's good for you to see that and there's no need to trip over your feet. We've already done this in task one. So in uh, in this task, we're going to add capabilities to the, uh, the plugin. And these will be, uh, initially, these are going to be PHP capabilities. Uh, and But we already have a, uh, the ability to disable or hide the icons on the toolbar. So we're going to leverage that to implement uh, capabilities or permissions checks, which will hide those icons on the toolbar, depending uh, on the user's permissions. So you'll need to go to live.php and the atto super pen params for js function. Uh, this is a convenient function that Moodle provides for us to pass uh, information into the uh, the JavaScript and JavaScript will pick that up and be able to act on it. So currently you can see we're setting red pen visible, green pen visible and blue pen visible flags here uh, and they are by default true. Uh, if however when we get to uh, the config settings, we check the admin settings. If we find that any of those is false, then uh, at this point, they will be set to false. Looking at this, it would actually be possible to remove this, wouldn't it? Because uh, we're just simply copying them straight over. That's something you might do. Well, let's add our capabilities checks first, just before we add the actual the capabilities themselves. So the first thing is that we're going to check against the course context because we can access the course context using the global course variable, but it's not so easy to act on the module context or the uh, uh, the activity context because we don't know if we are in a forum, we don't know if we are in a blog post, we don't know if we're in an assignment submission. We simply don't know. We don't have that information available to us as far as I'm aware. So we check in the course context. Uh, and we use our familiar if not has capability the name of our capability in this case red pen visible uh, and the course context we check this and if it turns out that we do not have this capability then red pen visible will be set to false similarly green pen visible will be set to false and blue pen visible will be set to false uh, those parameters are then passed into javascript down here uh, we create an array and uh, it's an associative array, the name of the parameter and then the value of the parameter. And then we simply return that to Moodle who will do a nice job of passing it into JavaScript for us. We'll see later how to actually pick that information up and use it in our JavaScript module, but that will not be this week. All right, now in step five, we're going to add the capabilities to our plugins uh, access.php file, which is in the DB folder. And there should already be one plugin there, which is the Atto Superpen Visible plugin. In actual fact, although uh, it is there, I don't think we're using it currently. We're going to add instead a visible capability for each of our three pens. And the code is actually uh, for, the, for this entire this, this entire section where we did where we declare the capabilities array, this code is actually uh, in the task listing. So you should just be able to copy and paste this declaration of the capabilities array. Be careful when you do this because um, what you'll what you'll find is that we do have a lot of brackets that open and close and and, and commas to because it's actually a long array and this is you know one. Um, one array within an array. So there's lots of nested array declarations and, and commas. So just be careful that you have a comma between your uh, array members and that you close it out properly at the end. Uh, 
note that the red pen visible is different in its declaration to the green pen visible because we have removed the uh, capability allow, the allow capability from the student here. In the green pen, we have uh, the ability for the student to see the green pen. And also in the blue pen, we have the ability for the student to see the blue pen. But we have uh, deliberately removed the ability for the student to see the red pen. And this is really just to, to flex our muscles a little bit and to show that we can, in fact, do this. So once you have saved, uh, once you've copied and pasted the capabilities declarations into your access.php file in the database folder in the DB folder of your plugin, save that and upload it to your server. Step six is the final piece of code that we need to add to make the capabilities functionality complete. We need to add the language strings for each of the capabilities. Uh, we can see here we have those they are super pen colon red pen visible super pen colon green pen visible and super pen colon blue pen visible and these will uh, these will display in, in permissions areas where we need to see the various permission types and their names uh, it's very easy to forget this, this is something I, I forget often when having created a, a capability is to add these uh, these language things because you don't see them right away often uh, you don't notice that they're missing but once you have added those, you are going to have to uh, increment the version of your plugin uh, and go through and upgrade it. So let's do that in the next step. So in step 7, we're going to have to increment the version.php, uh, the version number in version.php of our plugin. You only just have to do this uh, briefly, but this uh, tells Moodle to uh, recalculate the capabil capabilities, pick any new capabilities up, uh, as well as send some of the language strings for our SuperPen plugin, if they're in JavaScript, uh, recache those for JavaScript. Once we have up to the version number, we're going to have to tell Moodle to actually install that course so we go to our site administration notifications page and we go through the upgrade process since we haven't added any new settings as such we won't see any new settings uh, in the upgrade process okay and our upgrade has gone successfully and we should now be able to uh, confirm that uh, the capabilities we have put in place are actually effective. And the final step in our task two of week seven is to confirm that our capability system that we implemented has actually gone according to plan. So the best way to do this is to log in in one browser window as an administrator and then in another browser window, log in as a student. There are different ways of logging in as students. Uh, you may know that from a particular student's profile as an administrator, you can right click, or you can choose to log in as, and without knowing their password, you can log in as them. Or you can choose to uh, set your role and the course administration down here, under course administration, switch role to student here. I found this uh, to be a little bit unreliable at times, um, but shall we try it? So here we are, we logged in as an administration, as administrator, and we can see that all of the icons are in fact displaying. If we log in, if we go out of here, because the student will not have the ability to see the, uh, the news forum, uh, the, the edit area of the news forum, we'll move out of there and we'll go into the student forum and we'll change our role to that of a student. Here we have a student form. So let's first of all uh, switch role to student. When we enter our student form, 
The desired uh, outcome is that the red pen is not displayed on the HTML editor because we have denied the permission or we haven't added allow permission to the student role for that purpose. Okay, and we can see that when we change our role to student using the uh, using this switch role to function we have down here, when we uh, set that to student, we do in fact have the situation where the red pen has disappeared. The other way of doing this, which I personally prefer, is to, from the menu, uh, choose new incognito window of your Safari or Google Chrome or whichever browser it might be. They're called different things. Sometimes they're called secret window. Uh, and open a new browser window, which will be completely separate. So you're actually able to log in as a different user simultaneously. Uh, and in this case, I've logged in as Russell Crowe. And you can see again that the red uh, red pen is not displayed because our capabilities checks are in fact working correctly. Okay, so if you've gone all the way through uh, task two uh, and completed all of the eight steps, uh, you're a warrior and you've done very, very well. Good luck with the remaining uh, activities in this course and I'll see you next week.